And these are the rituals that I gathered together in this book because I found out from these studies that there are certain things people who are happy and successful and living their dreams do that a lot of us don't. And these are not habits or routines, these are rituals. Because if you take those away, they feel diminished. They have become so important to them, these, these rituals, that they regard them as their key. And the reason they work is because when you start acting in a certain way, the universe finally thinks that you're worth investing in. Until then, if you're all just thinking, dreaming, hoping, praying, meditating, doing yoga pose after yoga pose, which we've all done, I've done it, I've done it, it's what I've done, if nothing in your life will change. You might feel a bit happier and there might, you know, the law of attraction does work with your thoughts. Thoughts are energy, they go out in the ether and you do attract something, but there won't be dramatic change, which I'm sure a lot of people want. They want their life to be better and that's what I wanted. Um, and I realised then it wasn't my fault, my thinking wasn't at fault, my actions were. So then it was now I had to put it to the test, I had to try on myself. I had to incorporate these daily actions into my life, I thought why not? I've got the information here, I've been access to scientific journals, talking to scientists, talking to psychologists, let's see. So I incorporated these actions into my day. And I know what the conscious mind is like. The conscious mind doesn't like to be told, you are going to do this for the rest of your life. The conscious mind will rebel. So I just told my conscious mind, I'm going to do this, these, these daily actions for three weeks. Then if it doesn't work, I'll go back to my old ways. I'll go back to dreaming and hoping and longing for what I want. Because that's how the conscious mind works. Why three weeks? Well, there is that study which has, has actually been disproved now, they think it's maybe a bit longer or a bit shorter, it's all individual, that if you do an action for 21 days, neural pathways form in your brain and it becomes easier to incorporate in your life. 21 isn't the exact number, but it, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of positive change. Do something for three weeks and it becomes part of you. So I did it. And I am not joking. I had a dramatic change my health, my well-being. Suddenly people who, who weren't kind of adding value to my life or I wasn't val adding value to theirs kind of disappeared from my life because of my change in my approach. And I just felt happier. And then my work also began to change, my big dream, my Facebook page. I decided to go on social media because that's doing something, because you know, before people had to drag me to do that. I say, no, I'm writing my books, that's how I get my message out. No, we live in an online world, get real. You've got to get out there and give your message. My Facebook page just went crazy. It's currently over 120,000 likes and for an unknown author, that is incredible. And it's simply because I went out and I did something. I invited onto my page scientists, philosophers, psychologists, people who and I invited them, I said, would you do a video on my page? And because I'm blessed, I've been a Sunday Times best-selling author, they agreed to do it. The page went crazy. I invited these people because all of them wanted to talk about their research into the paranormal to prove it was real. Icons in the field, people like Dr. Dean Radin, for example, who is trying to prove that the mind can influence matter. And I put pe these people on the page, and, and the page was exposed. That was the first thing. And then I decided... I want to do something to, to, to give my readers a gift. In my books I often talk that I am a spiritual person and I'm intuitive and wonderful things have happened to me but I always say I wish I could talk to dead people, I can't. I can't give you that comfort. So I thought I'm going to go around the country and not audition mediums but I'm going to look at the forgotten mediums in spiritualist halls and see who to me is the real deal. Let's see. I, 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 I've never visited a medium myself but a lot of my readers get great comfort from them. So I went around and I found this amazing medium called Claire Broad, who has been in the field for 20 years, um, offering comfort and healing. And I said, let's collaborate on a book. You tell me your story. What's it like to hear heaven? And that book's coming up with Piatkas in November. 
um, and then I collaborated with the, the head of the Church of Jediism. <coughs> Jediism is, star yeah, you're laughing, Star Wars religion, but let's face it, there's a reason why Star Wars is a cultural icon. It's nothing to do with special effects or Harrison Ford, really. He's been in a lot of dud films. It's about the Force. And what's the Force? Chi, prana, Holy Spirit. And Jediism, all it does, it's not a Star Wars religion, it just celebrates the Force, its spirituality by another name. The guy who runs the, the, um, the church, Daniel Morgan Jones, he's a kind of a celebrity, he has been offered book contracts but couldn't write it because he has Asperger's and dyslexia. I thought, this is heaven calling. So we collaborated, I interviewed him, the book's coming out in November and um, it's coinciding with the release of The Last Jedi, so watch out for that. I hope that book will potentially reach people who would never normally come to Watkins. But they will with the Star Wars hook, do you see what I mean? And it was all because the trigger to all this change, and I'm doing other collaborations as well, was my rituals, which I've written about in 21 Rituals to Change Your Life. Um, it shifted me from being a positive thinker and a dreamer and a hoper. And there's nothing wrong with that. It did give me some success, but it didn't give me my dream. At the moment, finally, I'm starting to live my dream of getting my message out of we are spiritual beings having a human experience, let's concentrate on what really matters in this life and not what doesn't, to many more people, people who normally wouldn't engage in spirituality. Um, it's, it's shifted me to another way of being. And I'd love you to try the rituals and to get in touch with me and talk to me about it afterwards. I, I, I can't promise, of course, because I don't know how you're going to do it, but I can tell you, Every one of those rituals are backed up with research. You can see the studies in the back of the book. And successful, happy, fulfilled people do them. And they know why they're doing them. And every ritual, you've got to know why you're doing it. Don't make it a habit. Don't diminish it and make it a habit, because as soon as something becomes a habit or a routine, and you don't put your conscious thought in it, it has no power anymore. So you're probably thinking, oh, come on, tell me what a ritual is. Well, I'm going to tell you one ritual, and then we're going to do a very special ritual today with the feather and, 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 and the heart, um, which I hope will, will be a special memory for you, so that this is, is, is a special moment in time for you. Now, the first ritual, the ritual I'm going to talk about is one that um, quite a lot of people ask me about from the book. It's, it's the very first action, because this is all about actions, this talk, that you take in the morning. Think, in general, what's the very first thing you do when you get up? And I'm telling you, for 80% of people, most people here, it's going to be reaching for their phone. I know, that was me. Especially when I was busy with writing. My first thing, I had groggy eyes, and I reached for the phone or a glass of water, sometimes a glass of water, but then the phone. Scrolling through that immediately. And the first ritual that I'd like to tell you about today, and if you don't get the book, that's absolutely fine. And, I, that's fine, but just take this away with you and try it. And then if it works, then buy the book. For three weeks, the first half an hour of your day, don't touch your phone. I'll tell you why. First of all, I would like you to say, I'd like you to have a big stretch instead. That's the ritual. And as you stretch, enjoy that, because not only is stretching good for your, your body and mind, you know, it's just, it's just great. Enjoy those sacred moments in the morning. Enjoy them. You. You set the tone. The moment you become conscious, you set the tone for what's going to happen for the rest of the day. And if you stretch and focus on your day ahead, focus on who you are, I can tell you your day will be much more positive. If you go to your phone, the message you send the universe, and remember the universe is watching all of us. The universe is waiting for us to become viable. You are not viable if the first thing you do is to scroll down your phone and put everybody else's needs above your own, or your news feed, or your social media. The message you send to the universe is, I'm not worth bothering about, let's focus on them. And yes, we're taught to put other need, people's needs before our others. Yes, that is a very beautiful, beautiful ideal. I agree with that. However, I'm sure you know that you cannot give someone a drink from an empty cup. 
it is, there's a reason why in an aeroplane they say put your own oxygen mask on first. Most of us who are spiritual are people walking around without oxygen. We're such givers, and I'm sure there are a lot of empaths here. We give and give and give, but we don't... First of all, fill your own cup. Fall in love with yourself. That is the hardest job, and it's the starting point for spiritual growth as well. It is the hardest thing to love yourself and to take care of yourself. But until you do that, I'm telling you, the universe will not respond, will not bring into your life what you want. It won't bring in the right people. Because if you don't love yourself, you're going to attract people who take advantage of you. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to attract the right opportunities. You must take care of yourself first. Not to excessive levels. We hear a lot about narcissism these days. That's ridiculous. It's a balance. So that's the first rules in the book, actually. are You're probably thinking, oh, my goodness, how can I remember 21 things? There's seven in the morning, seven in the afternoon, seven in the evening. They're all things you already do, just a different slant on it. They're ritualized. So do that just for three weeks. Please, all of you, don't reach for your phone. Give yourself half an hour to be you and to enjoy being you and to set your focus and intention for the day. That will change your life. And I know you're probably quite cynical, as I was in the beginning, thinking, nah, it won't. It's too, too much of a small change. It will. It will. It will dramatically change your life. Okay, now, let's get to the feather and the heart. You're probably thinking, okay, have you got your feather? Have you got your feather? All right? No feathers. Where are the feather? Who's hogging the feathers? Has somebody walked off with the feathers and the heart? Ah! <laughs> have you all got your charm? You've got no charm. You've all got a charm? No, some lady up there hasn't. Sorry, could you just give them a charm? Let's focus on the feather first, right? Right, have you got a beautiful feather? Did you get a nice feather? <laughs> right, it's beautiful, isn't it, a feather? It makes you think of heaven, angels. I've written so many angel books. Angel held my hand, angel in my pocket, angel on my shoulder. You name it, I've written it. You go in the angel section, you'll think, how many times can we do a variation on the angel theme? And I get a lot of beautiful stories, actually, people who find white feathers at moments in their life. So I'm not, I'm not knocking it. It's beautiful. So think of, what does that make you think of, the feather? I'll tell you what it makes me think of. It makes me think of Dumbo. You know, in, in Walt Disney, have you seen Dumbo and his feather? Have you, watched, you haven't watched Dumbo? You haven't lived? No. <laughs> who hasn't watched Dumbo? Have I got... You haven't watched... Well, that's why you had to come here. <laughs> Go and watch Dumbo, a self-help classic. Um, absolutely beautiful film. It's about an elephant with very big ears. And he... Yeah, it's a Disney film. And uh, he, he... Somebody tells him that if he holds a feather in his trunk, he can fly with those ears. And he believes that person and he can fly. But then he loses the feather and he goes crashing down. But what he doesn't realise, of course, he could fly all the time. The feather's just giving him the belief. And that's what I'm talking about. If you have bought into this whole positive thinking mantra, which is beautiful, that's in a way what you're like. That, not like, I'm saying you're big elephant. I'm not saying that, elephants with big ears. Oh dear, this is going horribly wrong. But what I'm saying is that you, you have bought into something which is draining your energy of your real potential. The feather isn't going to make you fly. The feather can't make you fly. Um, it's, it's, it's just positive thinking. The feather can't make you... <laughs> <laughs> the feather can't make you fly. So you can positive think away. You can positively dream about having the life of your dreams as much as you like. Unless you take some action, it's just going to stay a feather. It's not the power. The power is in you. You already have it. And that's why I'd like to, to, you to just put the feather down on the floor now. Watkins going to kill me because they're going to have to clear it up. We don't want the feather. Please get rid... This is a symbolic action. This has no power except for what you give it. It is a symbol of stop dreaming, visualizing, meditating, hoping and praying for 
a blissful life and a blissful life is your birthright stop it if things go wrong in your life it's not because of your thinking you haven't wished it so I used to beat myself up so often if a book contract fell through or a relationship didn't work it was because somehow something wrong with my thinking so I'd go and take myself off to a retreat and meditate and all that hoping that I'd clear my mind of all the clutter and start afresh. Honestly, that's how I've been. I want to save you all from that. You don't need it. What you need is to do. You are what you repeatedly do. Yes, your thoughts are important, but your thoughts do not dictate what you do. And if you're struggling to know what to do, this book will guide you. It will give you 21 positive actions that if you incorporate them into your day, I can tell you the universe is going to start thinking of you as something worth investing in because you are living, you are becoming what you want to be rather than dreaming and hoping for it. The rituals are the trigger. Just, I mean, have you all met someone in, in life, I talked about this earlier, who, is, who promises things and says they're going to do something? I, I haven't got time for those people anymore. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll get back to you or um, uh, they, they say they feel a certain way and they don't. And then their actions are completely opposite. Always judge people from now on if you do anything. Look at this heart. Actions come from the heart. From now on, judge everyone in their, your life, not by what they say, but by what they do, by what they actually do. If somebody doesn't get back to you and they say they will, that is a, that is a sign for you to reevaluate, the, 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 and obviously, you know, you, nobody's perfect, we all forget, I'm saying you have to have balance. But think that the every time, that this is how the universe regards you. If you are just saying things as I was, I was this positive thinking writer and dreamer and hoper. I lived that in my books, and all the books before the last few years are that, there's me positive thinking. But I wasn't actually getting my message out doing what I want to do, which is to get my message out to people who normally wouldn't gauge, engage in spirituality, and I'm finally doing that. It's taken me so long to get there. All right. <laughs> and the universe, and the universe is, is looking at you that way. It's thinking, stop talking. I want to see you now loving yourself. I want to see you taking action. Um, Okay, two minutes, two minutes, I'll wrap up. Um, so do you see what I'm saying? So the mantra is, you are what you repeatedly do. Sorry, I've been a bit long-winded. I'm, I'm not that used to public speaking. It's still coming, not coming naturally to me, but I'm hoping that I've got a point across. And the last thing I'd like you to ask, you, you chose a colour when you did. Well, your spirit did. I do believe in these things. There's a colour there. It's probably a green or a red or a pink or a purple. And this is, this is just a little symbol for you to, to remember that from now on you're going to do. You're going to do things rather than think and dream and hope. And the colour is going to tell you which direction you should be moving in. And I'm not going to tell you that. I, I do know all about colour healing and everything. But this is the place to find out about it. They have wonderful books about that. Research your colour. You picked it for a reason. For example, if you chose a shade of blue, Chances are it's to do with communication. But colour healing is so fascinating. There's, you, you can learn a lot from colours. There's great wisdom. Hey, just, just, you know, what have you got? Are <laughs> you laughing? I was just saying that we both have a very, very high pink. Oh, pink. It's a bit washed up. Pink is unconditional it's, love, isn't it? Yeah. So does that mean uh, what's unconditional Amber, is that orange? That's orangey. It, orange, orange, joy. You see, you've got to watch Dumbo. <laughs> Simple. It's a funny film, but it's, it's, you know, it's about joy and creativity and expression. More joy, more laughter, more laughter. Um, green. You see, you're all trying to... I want you to go and look here. I want you to go and find a colour book. Um, green is about growth. growth and also finances. Maybe you should be looking into more in, in material ways, to whatever you're doing with your life, that you should be looking at, at material ways to make it pay. Maybe you're doing too much for free. I don't know. But more, more um, material. Um, that's actually 
where you've got to look at charging more for what you do, whatever you do, valuing yourself a bit more. With, but it's about growth, definitely growth. But I'm not going to say any more because I, I'd love you to. But I, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm sorry if I've gone off on a tangent sometimes. It's just that there's so many thoughts coming through I'm trying to get to. The power of ri rituals is the secret. It is about the power of I do. No more dreaming. Yes, you can meditate, it's fun, but no point meditating if you don't take action. It's like saying you want to lose weight and then watching television all day and eating chocolate. And that's how the universe regards you if you visualize success, but don't do positive things. And in that day, I'll say thank you very much. And um, <laughs> have I really gone on? Oh,